Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode, client cannot accept their wrong. Floor it. No, don't floor it. Floor it. No, don't floor it. Okay, floor it. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Client cannot accept their wrong. Hey TFTS, first time posting, which is odd since I've worked all my professional life in application support and couldn't think of a story to post even though I have thousands. My first job in London was providing first and second line of support to a reporting software my company built and sold to clients in the financial sector. We had two types of clients, hosted or in-house install. While the first were easy to debug, log into their environment, replicate and assess, all while having full access to the back end, the others were less so for obvious reasons, yet we kept a, virtually stale, copy of their initial environment to provide some semblance of support. This story, obviously, is about the latter type. The software itself was like Tableau, in which you add objects to a sheet, graphics, tables, images, to create a template, and the workflow fills in the latest data as often as you want it, daily, weekly, monthly, and generates the final report in the format you want, the most common being Word or PDF. Also, the software used a proprietary third-party software to convert Word documents into PDF. Don't recall which one it was, but we would buy the license ourselves, and would give it to the client for their in-house install. We didn't only recommend this software in our install documentation, but insisted that they use it since our product only supported this vendor in particular, meaning it could probably work with others, but we only tested this particular one, so could only ensure it works as expected with it, and it alone. So, the ticket in question was floating around for a while, bouncing from one support member to another, and no one could figure it out. We were only four in the support team, so it was bound to land on my plate eventually. Also, side note, I was the youngest, by far, in the team, and my imposter syndrome was high, so I was dreading my turn to have a go at this issue. The problem was that the generated PDF reports were showing the objects completely misaligned compared to what they were supposed to look like. Moreover, this only happened when generating PDFs, Word docs came out as expected. So, this being an in-house installation, we could only try to replicate it on our end to no avail. A coworker tried to get a copy of their database to get our environment in line with the clients, but that was turned down because of sensitive information that they couldn't share. What's the point of non-disclosure contracts? Another coworker tried a screen sharing session, but all it helped for was to see the report being generated incorrectly, since their IT team wouldn't let us take a look at the backend and see if the software was installed properly. By then, the client was getting impatient with how long it was taking for this issue to be resolved. So having this information telling me how tied my hands were, plus the pressure on being the last line of defense, I do the first thing I can come up with, I check an Acrobat reader who is the PDF producer of the file the client sent. Usually, you would expect to see the name of the third-party software as the creator, but lo and behold, the client was using some other tool for the PDF conversion, why? As I said, we provided the license for for free. So it wasn't a matter of saving pennies. So, I happily send my reply to the client stating unfortunately, you're using a software we don't support, please use product name, as is specified in our documentation. One would expect the issue to be closed, the client was caught red-handed using our software incorrectly, thus in breach of contract. However, as you read the title of this story, this was not the case. All I got in return was a condescending reply to my email CCing the account manager on our company, and my boss stating this is ridiculous, account manager's name. This has taken long enough. Can't someone fix the damn problem? I wish I could say the story had a satisfying ending, but unfortunately for me, my company was too British in their mentality and followed the creed of the customer is always right. I didn't hear back on this issue, and luckily that client didn't raise many tickets, so I didn't have to deal with them again. My guess is that the AM had to convince them to use the third-party software we supplied, but I never asked her how that discussion went. 
All I got was a chuckle from the rest of the team saying how didn't I think about that before, and a pat on the back from my manager which would come back and haunt me for the rest of my days at that company since I became known as the last resort guy, which meant I had to deal with all the troublesome tickets. Floor it. No, don't floor it. Floor it. No, don't floor it. Okay, floor it. So I work for a contracted company as first level support mixed, and we do the typical resets and downloads for VPN access due to remote users still having to work from home. We will call this company the HAAC just to really hide myself. A common ticket we run into is the VPN access, simple AD permission, and we email them a link with the VPN software and a document on how to set up the VPN on their own. 95% of users can follow these both by reading without any issues. There are some who need more assistance which are the 4% and then the 1% are the users who really, really, really struggle with reading the documentation. Now that the stage has been set, let's get to our 1% user who has issues with connecting to the VPN. Me, Happy Accidents Abortion Clinic, No Mistakes in Life Just Happy Accidents, Help Desk. How can I help you today? User, hi, I need VPN setup on my computer, I was told to call this desk. Me, sure thing, can I get your network credentials for verification on who you are? User, okay, it is, redacted. Me, just a moment please k the search of the AD account. Me, alright, I just found you now let's get you set up. User, sweet, can you walk me through it? Me, no need, we have a document if you want to go at your own pace. It is pretty solid and is verified by the CTO. User, oh great thanks. End call 1. I email the link to the download for the VPN and send over our step-by-step -step guide on how to download in separate emails due to potential filtering in the Exchange server and Symantec. Fast forward 20 minutes, the user calls back. Me, Happy Accidents Abortion Clinic Help Desk, this is you backslash thine underscore captain, how can I help you today? User, hi I called earlier and one of the help desk people sent me some links on setting up my VPN. Me, oh okay, I believe we spoke earlier, are you running into any issues with the setup? User, yes, I clicked the link in the document you sent and the website is not working. Me, oh my mistake, let me take a look. I checked the link in the document, it is just for the MFA setup, but she should not need it since she got the enrollment email and it says she set it up. Me, alright, it appears that you already set it up. User, no I didn't, I clicked download and it's not setting up. At this point I realize she means the VPN download and not the MFA app me, okay, let me remote in to take a look. One quick assist session later. Me, alright let's see here, it appears that you have downloaded it multiple times now. You don't need to download it again. User, oh you want me to do it again, but it didn't work. Me, no, don't download it. User, download it again? Me, firmly, no, don't download it. User, okay, I'll download it. It was an honest enactment of Mrs. Puff and SpongeBob saying floor it and no don't floor it. The user proceeds to click the download link roughly five times for a grand total of 20 downloads and clicks one link and notices that it starts to install. I stick with the user for about 20 more minutes and find out that she registered her work phone for MFA, big no-no for us due to the phone systems not having the ability to receive the short MFA calls, IDK never cared to ask why, I'm a contractor not a cop. We finally get to the login with MFA and she is able to get on. She tells me. User, I was just following the document, I am not sure what happened. Me, can you show me which one you were talking about that I sent? User, she pulls up the email, first with just the download link, not acknowledging the one sent immediately after with documentation. Me, man this is not the documentation. I mentioned earlier that there would be two emails coming. End call. The 1% are truly the special ones when they don't see an email that was right above it and clear as day due to the 200% zoom enabled.